Would y'all agree that conscious communication and aligning our language with the teaching is a good thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what our next speaker is going to be talking about. She's a natu doctor of naturopath. Her name is Dr. Beth Carpenter, and she's going to teach us how to align our language with communication and intention. Please help me welcome Dr. Beth Carpenter. grocery store or wherever, walking around these expos. And being in alternative medicine and looking at energy medicine, you also have to look at the area of communication. Because oftentimes the language in which we use as our standard language and way of communicating with one another does not have a higher vibration. Although everyone's walking around seeking a higher vibration to enjoy life with, okay? Um, I wrote down some things just within the last week I heard people say. And this is really common because a lot of people speak in what I term as the language of the not. In our communication, whether it's outwardly spoken or inwardly spoken, tells a much bigger story. So that's what we're going to look at. Um, here's some things that I've heard. I'm not trying to get depressed. People say these things, okay? I know you'll never be unhappy with him. What did I not say right? Obviously, I said something wrong. There's no way I can't find a job in Houston. And the problem is, and the problem is, okay, well, I'll be damned. Okay, that's kind of a Texas thing. That's not a good thing yourself, okay? Some things never change. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. How does it get worse than this? Okay? All of those things speak about what's going on with us. I listened one time to this gentleman who um, had just left the workshop that we were taking together. And as he was walking from the workshop, he was walking along a sidewalk, kind of on the curb, and he stumbled, his ankle twisted, and he fell, and as he fell, he broke his ankle. And we were actually talking about conscious communication and conscious languaging. <laughs> so when he came back, we asked him, what were you thinking at the time that your ankle twisted and you fell off and snapped it? Well, he was going through a divorce, and the words in his head was, I can't stand this anymore. Okay? So the more I can help you be aware of your language, the healthier your physical body is going to be and the healthier your mental is going to be. And if both of those are healthier, then your emotions will be healthier too. All right? I began looking at positive thinking from a number of motivational speakers and people like Wayne Dyer and Deepak Chopra and things like this. And there's also a gentleman by the name of um, Bob Stevens who teaches something called conscious languaging. And through all of these different people, you begin to pay attention to where you take out the not, which is almost like a violence. We don't recognize it, but how we speak comes across as a violence because oftentimes when we're communicating with somebody, people wind up getting frustrated and irritated. Okay, so this is about releasing that. I'd like to read a poem to you. And it's by Ruth uh, Biebermeyer. It's called Words or Windows, or They Walls. I feel so sentenced by your words. I feel so judged and sent away. Before I go, I've got to know, is that what you meant to say? 
Before I rise to my defense, before I speak in hurt or fear, before I build that wall of words, tell me, did I really hear? Words are windows, or are there walls? They sentence us or they set us free. When I speak and when I hear, let the love light shine through me. If my words don't make me clear, will you help me to be free? If I seem to put you down, if you felt I didn't care, try to listen through my words to the feelings that we share. What I'd like for each of y'all to do is to look inside of you and decide whether or not you would like to begin to change your languaging to match what it is that you say that you truly desire in this life. All right? Do you want to be sick and tired or do you want to be joyful? This is a life to be delighted with to fill yourself with joy with. We just have to retrain ourselves, to retrain our thinking and our words inside of us. Okay? So these are some things that we're going to talk about today. I want to talk about some things that will help us um, to be more deliberate in our communication. And if you have notes, I think it's good to take notes. I always like to give people homework. One of the most important things to do is to eliminate assumptions. How many in this room has made any sort of assumption in your life? <laughs> Did you regret your assumptions at some time or another? Yeah. So what if you let go of assumptions? What if you told yourself, just put that on the back shelf? What if I just live this life and wait and see? Okay, so with that, eliminate assumptions. The other thing I like for people to do is begin to recognize when they're hitting a glass ceiling. Have you ever in your life where everything's going great, and it's going great, and it's going great, and then all of a sudden, bam, something hits you, and you go tumbling back. And you go, you know, I get so far, and then I don't know what happens. And everything just seems to fall apart. But what is this with the glitches? All right. Those are called mutually assured deterrence destruction systems in our body. Okay, I actually got that term from Los Alamos. <laughs> peace bomb. Do you remember the peace bomb during the Cold War? I can't move so far, so I'm right here stuck. So <laughs> we have these systems in our body. What they were, how this Cold War was between Russia and the United States is, is I got a bomb, and if I press my button, I'm gonna annihilate you. And we said, well, we got ten bombs, and each of our bombs have ten warheads in them, and if you press yours, we're going to press ours, and we'll all be annihilated. That was known as the peace bomb, okay? We have those bad systems inside of us, too. And the sooner that we can recognize those mad systems, we can begin to separate from those systems and enjoy living life. Because we have a way of already sending out some thoughts they just haven't come back yet. So if all of a sudden you're moving along in life and things are going great and something comes and feels like a little slap, just go, oh, I think I've already sent that out. Okay? So if you begin to recognize that, they're not as serious. All right? They can just, like, dissolve away. Here's an example where a thought can torment you. Um, I got in a new car, and how many people, when they get a new car, they're worried about it getting scratched or dented? Yeah, yeah. And so I was having like these attacks, like, oh my gosh, what if somebody hits my car? What if something falls on it? Okay. 
So I meant, yes, you need to recognize the chaos inside of you and that you're causing yourself self-sabotage. And I said, okay, whatever's going on here, let's clear this block. And so consciously tell yourself, whether you verbalize it or just in your head, hey, spirit, let's clear this. I don't want any glitches. Well, it was already in motion, okay? But here's what happened. I found myself, I was at a park in um, Austin, and I was backing up. And as I was backing up, something hit from underneath, a little rock that was sticking up higher that hit my tank. So I still had the wreck, but it was minimized. Okay, so you can soften these things that you've already sent out. Has anybody heard of Ellen Wilcox Wheeler? Okay, she was a poet and she wrote reading cards. But she wrote some very metaphysical poems. And she has one that I love. And it's about thoughts, which is also very connected to words, because our words will speak from love and gratitude are with poison, okay? Because of what's going on inside of our heart. In this poem, it's called um, Thoughts or Things. Thoughts or things in their airy wings are swifter than carrier doves. They follow the law of the universe. Each thing creates their kind, and they speed over the track to bring you back whatever went out of your mind. So even though you may not speak it, but you think it, those are still in motion. So by being able to say, I can be in present time, in the now, and to be an observer of my life, when you notice that you're not being as happy or positive or honest, you can call yourself on it. Okay, not to beat yourself up. This is about being gentle with yourself. Alright? But call yourself on it so you can begin to make those changes. This is a process that takes a little bit of time. Okay? The third one I have down is stop either and oring. Okay? A lot of people go, I can have this or this. I can do this. Or that. That is a thought process of scarcity. So start thinking in the terms of having both. Okay? How many times in your life you said, I had to, I have to make a choice between this or that? How many times in your life did you go, how can I have both? Okay? The next one I have down is actually 11 here. Is give action questions to source. This is really fun. Because source, spirit, God, whatever you'd like to call the great creator, loves to answer your questions. But give questions that can be answered. How does it get better than this? Is a really good one. How many people have either themselves or known somebody that came up to them and said, you're just not going to believe this, but this and this and this and this has happened to me. And then at the end they go, how can it get worse? And you run into them a week later and they have another laundry list. Okay, It's like, what did you expect? You asked for worse, not for better. Or wouldn't it be nice if blank? And you can fill in that blank. All right. One time I did this. I was. I always do the um, Irish fest at uh, Fair Park up here. And as I'm driving to Dallas, I'm going. Wouldn't it be nice if people came out of the woodwork and just gave me presents? I was getting real creative that day. And you know, I had four strangers give me presents from nice shawls to bracelets. It was amazing. These are the types of communications if you offer it to spirit. See, part of this is about what you communicate with yourself, and part of it is what you communicate with spirit. And because spirit lives here and spirit lives here, if you give those questions, 
where it answers in the positive, you're start, going to start recognizing your life getting better and better and happier and happier. My dear mother, I love her dearly, okay? And every time I talk to her, she goes, and the problem is, and the problem is, and I go, mother, and the solution is, <laughs> look at the solution. I remember uh, a friend telling me, he's a CPA, and he had this man come to him. He does his taxes. And the guy comes and he says, I want to buy this yacht, I want you to write it off on my taxes. Okay? He said, I can't, you're not in the business. I can't write this off. He says, I don't care, you find a way to make this happen, that I can write this yacht off on taxes. He said, you'll have to open a yacht business. He said, okay, I'll do that. He opened a yacht business made more money selling yachts than he did in his own business, so he sold his other business and now just sells yachts. <laughs> what did he do? He looked for a solution. As <laughs> crazy as it was, he looked for a solution. And that's what this is about, is looking for the solution instead of going, oh, my God, that's awful. Go, hmm, very interesting. I haven't thought about it that way. Because oftentimes we unconsciously will agree with people who are talking about stuff that we know we don't agree with. And we think they're just being terribly negative, but we're going, uh-huh, 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 you're right, oh yeah. <laughs> you're unconsciously agreeing. Same thing with songs. How many people, while driving in a car, just start singing and don't have a clue what you're singing to? <laughs> Okay? What's one of them I know people have sung to? It just automatically comes out of your mouth. Ain't got no satisfaction. <laughs> what is that reinforcing in your life? <laughs> exactly. It's actually fun. I have some friends. We play this game with each other. We'll just have regular conversations and we call each other on our languaging. What did you say? How would you say that differently? Okay, here's another thing. How often do you hear the words, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Start saying things like, I choose to know. I think I'll research that. I know somebody I can call for that answer. This allows you to be more conscious. Another one that people unconsciously say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> now I'm like, please don't say it anymore. No more. No more. Okay? Be creative. Brainstorm with your friends. What would you say in place of I'm sorry? <gasps> you didn't know this was going to be good. Hi, participation. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Like, if it's in the context. Okay. I don't use I'm sorry anymore for anybody. Good. Good. Business. I don't say, I'm sorry, your report was late, or I'm sorry. I'll say, excuse. I don't know, I use the word excuse okay. instead. Think of, yeah, think of different ways yes. of saying things that are more positive, that have a little bit different vibrational energy. Oftentimes, people will give a sentence, oh, I'm feeling great, but you just run not believe. Okay, the first part was really good. Okay, the second part just took all that energy and just wiped it down the hill. Okay? Stop those things, the buts, the tries, the needs, the worst, the ugly. The neat thing is, is you're operating from love and from gratitude. You're going to see clearly. You're going to make better decisions. You're going to attract happier people around you. And the people that are negative won't call you anymore. <laughs> So that works well. <laughs> you know, I went one time, um, a friend of mine, her boyfriend plays in a band in Austin. And so I went to listen to this band, and this friend of theirs sat down at the table, and he just complained, and he complained, and he complained. And I'm just like going, oh my gosh. And I was like trying to scoot my chair over, and every time I scooted my chair over, he kept scooting closer. <laughs> And I said, was there anything good that happened? <laughs> like within the last year or two? <laughs> He's like, 
Well, yeah, sure there was, but... And he went into his list again. I went, got to run through the restroom. Okay? So find a way around that. You'll be amazed how your world changes. All right? I'm amazed. People will come out of the woodwork for you. Opportunities will come. Love, money, everything. Health. Okay? There was a woman. Has anybody here seen the movie The Secret? It's a good movie, isn't it? It's a one. If you, if any of you have not seen the movie The Secret, you have to buy it. You can go to www.thesecret.tv. I think some of the like Unity churches sell it. You'll have to check. But there was a woman in there who had uh, breast cancer, and she said, she said, I couldn't afford negativity. I couldn't afford the stress. And her and her husband, they would rent funny movies, and she would watch these, she would laugh, and every single day she would say, thank you for my healing. <clears throat> that changes things. In 30 days, her cancer was gone. All right? That's what changes inside of you. Dr. Masori Moto talked about this through his photographs of water. What is your intention when you put that in? All right? Is it like, you're an idiot, or thank you? To me, thank you has more power than even I love you. I love you is <clears throat> overrated. It's overused. Because most people don't know how to come from their heart. To say thank you, it brings you into gratitude. So when you say I love you, it has more meaning. Okay? Start saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so happy and grateful now that blank and fill in that blank. Do it every single day to be happy and grateful. Because there are so many wonderful things out there. Every time you think angrily, irritably, sadly, you're feeding that energy not just in your home, but on the planet. So move away from that. Your health will get stronger. Okay, back to the list. I get distracted. I love just talking about this. Because languaging is absolutely vital. Play with it. I have so many people that all the time, they say, I don't know exactly how to explain this. Learn to explain. Learn to use your words. I talked about noticing when you make negative statements. I talked about eliminating the but try and want. Okay. Try expressing what it is that you would like to create. I listen to people all the time, and what they do is they are... Adam, I am absolutely not going to do da 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 da. And I says, well, what do you want to do? <laughs> well, I don't know. I kind of thought maybe, you know, it would be really nice if, you know, I don't want to put anybody out, though. Okay? That energy is wishy-washy energy. And if you put out wishy-washy, what do you get back? Wishy-washy. Yeah. <laughs> I talked about this with songs, eliminate the unconscious colloquialisms. Like singing the songs that saying, huh, you're going to die if you don't love me. Okay? Or you can't get any satisfaction. Or I'll be damned. And by the way, I'm canceling all these things I'm saying. It's just for the talk. We <laughs> got to make sure that's clear. <laughs> Let go of the need to defend. Retort, blame, judge. In communication, it's about taking responsibility for your life. Enjoying the things that are spontaneous that occur in life and enjoying the things that are present time. I have a little thing I'd like for you to write down. And it's five sentences. It's I desire play. I will 
blank. A little book with blank. We're going to fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. I plan to blank. I plan to. What's the second one? <laughs> okay, I'll start at the beginning. I desire blank. I will blank. I plan to blank. I have blank. I am blank. I am? Yeah. This is good practice. So pick something that you know that you desire. Let's say it's a vacation to Italy. All right? It's okay to be material in this world. We're part human and part spirit. All right? And as long as we're living in love and gratitude, let's spread it all around the world. Okay? So, I desire to go to Italy. I will go to Italy. I plan to go to Italy next summer. I have my plane ticket to Italy. I'm in Italy. All right? Make things clear, precise, in that of your desires. Let go of the wants, let go of the needs, let go of the tries, and say yes to life. That's really what this is. This is about saying yes with gratitude and with love and asking spirit every day, how does it get better than this? And it's okay if it's the best day you've ever had in your life. That woman said, I couldn't ask for anything better. And I said, oh, please do. <laughs> My gosh, if it's great right now, what can it be? Okay. Do you have questions? I'm getting all the little, you know, countdowns here. Yes. I'm confused in what the problem is with having wants or how wants and needs are different from desires. Well, it has a different vibration with the word. And I'm going to use your sentence if you'll be okay with it. You say, I'm confused. I'm interested in understanding this more clearly. That has a stronger, healthier vibration than confused. Confused really does make you fuzzy. Makes you walk a little crooked, too. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So choose words that have higher vibration. Want means lack of. Yeah. Any other questions? I love talking, but we have our spots. Do you have a practice? I do. My practice is in Austin, Texas. I'm up in Dallas fairly frequently, and I work with clients by phone. And I actually teach people to change their languaging. That is, to me, part of the health process of body and mind. Yeah. And I do have some cards. I'll stand outside because I don't want to interrupt whoever the next speaker will be coming. And I'll be happy to talk to people out there. Is there any last question? She's smiling. She's happy with me that I'm going to direct people outside. Um, can you, uh, oh, Let me get the man behind you. Go ahead. Uh, you talked about choose words with higher vibrational energy. Yes. How do you know those words? I mean, we, I think we understand negative words. Yeah. People understand negative words real easily. And in the beginning, you feel like you don't have anything that you can communicate. You really do stumble over your words. And when I ask people, it's just go ahead and speak what it is that you were going to say originally. And then ask yourself, how would I say this differently? Because at first, it does feel like you're stumbling along. Um, I'm happy to talk to you more about the different words. Um, we just don't have all the time here. So but I will spend a few moments out here. And just be OK. That's why I say be gentle with yourself. It is so vital. I'm getting the. <laughs> so we will go outside. I want to thank you all for being here. Okay.